Hi everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Brother PR680W multi-needle embroidery machine. Well, the PR680W is the latest in a long line of embroidery machines from Brother, multi-needle machines, and uh, they've got a really amazing pedigree and history, the uh, the Brother multi-needle machines. And, you know, I've been doing this for, for a long time, since uh, 1981, and one of the, there's always machines that stand out, and um, the Brother PR series, uh, an, an absolute standout series machine for me, uh, since we started dealing with this particular range of machines way back in, oh, 2005 I think we started and um, they've proven the test of time and uh, the PR680 just keeps that that uh, that quality product going with some amazing new features that we're going to go through. So my purpose today is to really uh, dig in deep into this this machine, um, talk about all the, all the latest features and I'm going to actually go through the brochure that um, is available for download on our website so you can actually download this brochure and it's it's rich with content and information. So I'll use this as a reference as we go through it. That'll mean that when you're when you're taking a good look at this, reading the brochure, watching the videos, it'll all make perfect sense for you. The other thing I'm going to point out um, with the Brother PR series machines is that there is an enormous range of uh, accessories and extra hoops and devices available for it. And as you can see uh, by this little video we're showing at the moment, um, that's just some of them. Now, of course, uh, the best way to find out what is available and what models they're suitable for is again, to download one of these amazing brochures from our website, which is the accessories guide. And it has a uh, uh, indicator on the back telling you which models uh, the accessories are suitable for. But needless to say, there's an accessory for pretty much anything you might want to do. And I suppose it leads into the next question. Who, who is going to buy a machine like this, the, uh, the PR680W? <laughs> it could be anyone. You could be running a small business. You could be aiming to um, uh, just to improve your embroidery capacity at home. You might like the convenience of automation and uh, you could just be a home hobbyist who just loves embroidery. Really, uh, we have all sorts of people buying this style of machine, but uh, Brother have certainly done a great job at making it user-friendly regardless of what your uh, end result is. And um, it's I think it's the user-friendliness of it, the uh, the convenience of the multi-needles, and of course the, the superb results that it gives um, that is important. And, I, and I'll, I'll just say right off the bat now, um, from a stitch quality point of view, from a longevity point of view, and um, from support and backup, you cannot go past a Brother PR series machine. I will point out right now that these machines have an amazing warranty. So they have a full five year warranty, which is fantastic. And um, when you combine that with, as I said before, the ease of operation and the, the, the perfect results you get, it's an absolute winner. So with that said, let's dig in and take a closer look. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at the physical nature of the machine and explain some of the, the terminology that we use. So it is a multi-needle machine and obviously that means it has multiple needles. In this case, we have six needles. Those needle needles and needle bars are held in this head unit here that moves automatically to change colors. And you'll see that practically when we sew on it a little bit later. I obviously have six large spools of thread up here. This is, these are 5,000 meter spools and that's an advantage um, when you're using a multi-needle machine is that you they comfortably take the bigger spools of thread. But it's not to say that you can't use your normal small spools of thread, that's quite okay. General rules apply though, use a good quality thread and you'll get a great result. So I've got six colors loaded up there. Um, threading is very easy. One of the things that people look at and mistakenly say is, oh my goodness, it looks so complicated, I'll never be able to work it out. That is absolutely not true. I would think these are as easy, if not easier, than many of the home machines that are on the market. And when we show you how this machine actually threads, you'll see it's, it's not very difficult at all. And in particular, when you're changing to different colors, you just tie a spool on and pull it through. One of the big advantages it has is automatic needle threading. Again, we're going to show you that in some depth. Uh, lovely big screen here. So um, it's like a size of an iPad. It's high resolution. It's brilliant. Um, 
it's in the screensaver mode at the moment, and you can load your own screensaver to your machine, so uh, as we have done here. But if I touch that screen, it brings it to life, and as you can see, it's it's a large it's a large screen and very easy to navigate around. Again, we're going to be digging into that to uh, to a great deal um, of clarity very soon. Now, the other most important thing on a multi needle machine is that they're also typically a tubular machine. And by tubular, we mean it's a very accessible free arm. And you can see that there's the free arm on the machine. And that means that we can actually embroider things that you just really struggle to do on a home style machine because they are not tubular machines. So uh, again, when we hoop something up and show you how that works, it all makes sense. They do have a standard commercial type of bobbin system. So the bobbin case sits in here. Again, we'll show you that when we get a bit further into it. And, um, and it also means that it's, it's easily accessible without having to remove the hoop, which is a, a huge advantage. Another big thing on these machines is that they have got a, um, a, dual, a dual mount for all the hoops. And, and again, that just gives you better quality. Once we, when we get back into the sewing, you'll, you'll, you'll actually see that. Um, so physically, the machine is around about 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters footprint. Surprisingly, it takes up less space than the average home style machine because it doesn't need as much width and it also doesn't need as much depth because the hoop doesn't slide all the way back to the back of the machine. So they're actually a space saver. We've got this machine sitting on one of the brother um, trolley stands and it is adjustable in height. So it's nice to be able to set this to a height that suits you and the optional trolley stand will let you do that. Um, so that's the dimensions of the machine. It's, uh, it's pretty compact uh, and really would fit, fit into any home sewing or, or small business uh, em embroidery space that you could think of. Okay, so that said, let's take a look at the standard accessories that come with the machine. So standard accessories, it's pretty well equipped. First thing people ask is how many hoops does the machine come with? This particular model comes with four standard hoops. I'm going to run through them. This is the 60 by 40 um, hoop, obviously for very small little motifs, and I'll show you some advantages of that in a moment. The standard 100 by 100 hoop. This is typically the hoop you would use for a logo on a shirt or, or a standard 4 by 4 or 100 by 100 millimeter design. Then there's the probably the most used hoop of the lot, the standard 130 by 180 or 5 by 7 hoop, and uh, this is pretty much industry standard large hoop. That's that's what we reference to. And then it does come with this uh, very large 300 by 200 embroidery hoop. So that gives you a nice big accommodating embroidery area. So that in the old scale, that's a 12 by, in, 12 by 8 inch hoop. So they are standard with the machine. Now I'm going to mention that these are tubular hoops. And by that, I mean the part of the hoop that attaches to the machine actually sits on top of the fabric. And my best way to quickly explain that to you is if I wanted to put an embroidery on my sleeve here, on a home style machine, a single needle machine, it'd be really difficult. I'd probably have to undo the, the, the underarm seam or the side seam and open up the fabric. With this, I could simply slide that inner outer ring of the hoop into the sleeve and pop this part of the hoop onto the sleeve and then my sleeve will slide over the free arm. So that's what we mean by tubular, and we'll practically show you that when we embroider something a little bit later on. And all these hoops are tubular. Now the additional um, things that come with the machine, there are the hoop guidance or guide templates that come with each hoop size. So there's four of those to suit each of the hoops. There is obviously instructional manual, so you've got your operation manual and a, a really nice design guide. So there's quite a good range of designs built into this machine. Uh, all the color sequencing and all the information is there. Um, we'll go through that in a little, little while, so that's standard. It does come with the driver arm, which is the standard A arm that I have on the machine right now. They screw on very, very easily. You cannot do it wrong. It's, they, they've got little guide pins. It's impossible to do it wrong. But it also comes with what we call the B arm, and this is the arm that allows you to use a lot of the uh, the other um, dedicated hoops and, and different accessories that allow you to embroider so many more things. So that's standard in the box as well. It will come with a cable to connect directly to the computer if you do want to connect to a computer. Obviously a power cable comes, comes standard, let me show you that. 
Not that you need to see it. There is an independent bobbin winder unit. I'll just pull this guy up. So this comes standard in the box as well, so you can wind your own bobbins. But of course, these days, uh, we're so used to using pre-wound bobbins, you've got the option, either or. So you can wind your own bobbins. A, um, an excellent little accessory kit that has spare needles, uh, the little oiler, scissors, everything you need, the tools that are required with the machine. And so that's included in the box. And that's pretty much it as standard in the box. So it's pretty well equipped. You don't really need to buy anything else to, to get going with this machine. But of course, once we show you some of the fancy things that are available, you'll probably want to. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the key features and uh, ease of operation features on this machine. The first one, I mentioned it already, threading. People often go, oh my goodness, it looks so complicated, but it isn't. So let's touch this screen, and we are now in our standard um, embroidery screen, and let's take a look at the threading. Now, as I said, I've got six colors up here. I'm going to actually thread one of these from start to finish and show you just how easy it is. And I'm going to grab my little snips and I'm going to cut my thread back here and I'm going to pull that thread all the way through the machine so it's completely unthreaded. And you're gonna see it is not a complicated issue at all. And to do this, all we need to do is take our thread, in this case, my pink thread or purpley thread here. We come up to position number one above the spool, then through this little guy here. And then we come down into this guide here We flick under the little spring there. And here's the secret. You wrap it around the tension, not through the tension. And what happens is when we wrap it around, there's a little tiny, what we call spinner just there, and the thread spins on that wheel. And that's what applies tension to the thread. So it's quite unique. It's very different to your standard sewing, uh, sewing machine. Uh, so once we've got it around there, we come down, follow the little path there. And there is a guide on the top here. It tells you what to do come down through to under here, which collects the take-up spring, and now we go back up to the take-up lever, hook that into there, and then we come down and go through the corresponding hole just here. And we make sure that our thread is in the correct path, which it is, and then we just hook it into the needle bar guide. So the needle bar guide is an easy one to get to. If the current needle is selected, it just hooks up into there like that. But there is a little gadget in our toolkit for simply doing that. So it comes with this handy little threading tool. So if you don't want to pull that thread through there, all you do is just grab that little tool and hook the thread up into the, into the little needle bar guide, and that's it. Now, I have needle one currently selected, which is sitting above the needle hole. And to thread that, I'm just going to hit the needle threader button. Needle threader comes down, and I just go from right to left, up under there, hook that thread up, and hit the button. It's really, really simple. Now, that was threading the whole machine, the needle one, right from start to finish. But you don't need to do that every time. If I'm changing to a new color, all I need to do is tie the spool on, just cut it, tie my new color on, pull the thread out of the needle bar, out of the needle hole, pull the knot through, and then hit the needle threader button and re-thread the needle. It takes seconds and it's really, really simple. The Brother PR series, I think still, are the only commercial style embroidery machines on the market today that have an automatic needle threading system. It's a massive time saver. And if you're like me and you're getting a, a wee bit older and the eyesight's not so good, it's, <laughs> it's almost imperative. So needle threading is fantastic. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the tensioning system up here. It's really simple. Now I mentioned that when you thread the, the, the thread around the tension, the tension doesn't go between the what typically are tension discs on a machine, it wraps around a spinning wheel and the tension is applied to that spinning wheel. So it gives a beautiful consistent tension and is very, very forgiving. I mentioned before, it's always good to use good quality thread and it is, but um, the Brother machines are pretty forgiving for some of the sort of the lesser threads out there on the market too. Particularly good for metallic threads as well. So you get a beautiful stitch quality using metallics. And uh, I'm actually going to stitch on a bit of metallic thread later. So that's the uh, tensioning system. And the other good thing is if you adjust the tension a couple of turns, it's a really, it's a fine tuning thing. Unlike a lot of home machines, if you make an adjustment, it's quite a significant change in the stitch. This is all about just fine tuning to get a beautifully balanced stitch 
you rarely do you need to touch it to be perfectly honest that's it's such a, a consistent tensioning system so that's thread tensioning and now let's take a look at the bobbin system on this guy so it's a commercial style what we call l style bobbin um, system on here and a lot of you may have already used this type of bobbin case and uh, hopefully camera guys got this in in um, in shot so very very standard bobbin system um, the threading is very easy. I've got a, a little cardboard bobbin in here, but you can use plastic pre-wounds, sideless pre-wounds, magnetic pre-wounds. You can wind your own bobbins, whichever way you like. But once you load the thread in there, it's just a matter of hooking it under the little spring. Hold the latch open. I like to do it this way. We get the latch, hold the latch open, we put the bobbin case in, let the latch go, and then click it into position. And if you do that, you know you've got your bobbin case in position. It's really, really simple. Leave about two or three inches of thread hanging down there. You don't need to draw bobbin thread up or anything like that. The machine will just start sewing and pick that up beautifully. So, um, whoops, and I just notice I've got my thread just not in the right channel there. Pull that back down to the right channel. We're all good to go. And so that's threading. It's really simple. So what's next? Now we're going to take a good look at the the screen itself and, and uh, all the amazing features on this machine. Um, it's extraordinary. So stay with us as we go through a lot of the detail. This has got some incredible uh, new, new functionality. I am going to put the large 300 by 200 hoop on and you'll see I've just loaded a bit of fabric and I put a few markings on there. Um, it's all gonna make sense in a moment. So let's pop this on the machine. Now, when we're loading a hoop onto this machine, I mentioned earlier there's two points of contact um, where the hoop is loaded. Now, if you've been using a home style machine for, for some years and you're wondering, you know, what are the benefits of a, a multi-needle or a tubular or a commercial style machine? This is one of the key ones. Because it's got two points of contact, when we load this hoop on, it means, and, and they just slide on that easily, so they're simple to get on. It means there's no wobble in the hoop. Now, uh, again, if you've got a home style machine, go and put the biggest hoop on it, and just see how much movement there is at the extremities of that hoop. And often when you get to the end of a big stitch count design, or you'll often get little bits of outlines that just don't line up. And sometimes it can be because of that extra movement in the hoop. And you really don't have that in these machines because the two points of contact prevent that from happening. Loading the hoop is easy, taking it off is easy. You just put your thumbs under that, uh, on the top of those little lugs there, push up on the hoop and it just slides straight off like that. So we'll pop that back into place because I do want to show you some of the cool features and they just slide on, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, so let's grab my little stylus here. Now you can use the, the stylus that comes with the machine, the little plastic stylus, or you can use your finger. It doesn't really matter. You won't damage it with your finger. And um, the screens are very robust, very resilient, but the stylus is just a bit more accurate, obviously. So the first thing we're going to take a look at here is we're going to go into the settings pages and this machine has a little icon at the bottom there. Just click on that button there and there are 10 settings pages and you have all sorts of controls here. I'm not going to dig into everything because there's no real need to. Um, suffice to say that when you open it out of the box, it's going to be pretty much set to go. You don't have to do too much. Uh, the first thing I'm going to look at though is that the, the fact that this is a Wi-Fi machine. So You'll notice there's a little Wi-Fi logo at the top here. So if we click on that, that takes you automatically into your, um, your wizard for setting up your Wi-Fi. Now, I have already done that on this machine. It's, um, I've turned on the wireless LAN enable. I've turned that on and I've set to our local Wi-Fi network, which is Echidna Guest. Now, of course, if you, when you turn that on, it'll find your local Wi-Fi network. That's all you need to do. This machine is named Sewing Machine 516. You can change the name of that if you want to call it Bill or Betty or whatever, it doesn't matter. You can change the name. And that's what will show up on your um, on the apps that actually work with the Wi-Fi. You'll see the name of the machine. That's how you'll identify it. Nothing else you really need to worry about just there. So let's go back to page one. And right here, you've got the option of choosing the frame that you're about to use. I've currently got mine set to 300 by 200. But if I scroll through here, I've got all sorts of options. I can turn a 10 millimeter grid on. I can also turn on a 25 millimeter, 25 millimeter grid and just a standard cross hatch and no grid at all. I like to leave it on no grid. Um, I, I find that's just a bit more convenient for me. And the fact that I've got this hoop on, it's automatically detected that it's a 300 by 200 hoop. Now that's a good feature because 
most commercial machines you either have to input the hoop that you're going to use or you've just got to be careful not to run over the hoop. The brother machine will always, it will always recognize a dedicated brother hoop. You don't have to think about it. In, and, and what that means is that if you're using a genuine brother hoop, it's almost impossible to, to strike the hoop with the needle bar or the foot. And that's not the case on most commercial machines. You've got to make sure you've got the settings right. And, on, and as I said, on some machines, you don't have that option at all. You've just got to be super careful. So uh, hoop selection is easy. Now, um, you can also choose a few different thread palette ranges in here. Uh, there's the Brother Color palettes. There's also Madeira Poly, Madeira Rayon, Solky, Robison Anton, and Isochord, and Guterman, Paysetter Pro. So there's quite a few in there. Um, I'd love there to be Hemingworth. It's not. There's about 500 different thread brands on the market. There's only a, a handful of threads on the machine, but it's, it's kind of not that big a deal. And if you go to the Brother um, original palette, that will give you a really good selection of colors. And I like to use the name of the color. The reason for that, well, so I'm probably standing in front of my camera there. So um, the name of color makes more sense to me. So if you were stitching a, um, a, a, a brown color and it said um, dark brown, you know what dark brown is. But if it says color number 6248, yeah, I have no idea what that is. I'd, I'd much prefer to see the name of color. Um, you can also customize your screen layout with different thumbnail colors, etc. We don't need to get into that just now. Page two, you've got all sorts of options here for um, thread cutting. Uh, so you can, this, this machine trims threads. That's a great advantage if you've never had a thread trimming machine before. At the end of each, uh, each block of stitches or each color, it will cut the thread, hold the thread for the next, um, to, to start the next row of stitches. And you rarely ever will get left with um, jump stitches or threads on top of the fabric. So that's a great feature. Um, DST settings, that's all about jump stitches, etc. I don't need to get into that, um, that too much now. Suffice to say, again, wherever you see a black box on a brother machine behind a setting, that's the factory default. Your best option is to leave it there um, and use that as a starting point, and you rarely will ever need to, to um, adjust this. It also has a short stitch delete, and basically it says if there's any tiny stitches that are less than 0.3 of a millimeter, we don't really need them. And uh, But it will not get rid of tie-off stitches and tie-in stitches at the start and finish of any color, color block. Um, we'll just get our screensaver gone there. And um, it also has the ability to adjust the tail length or the, um, the, the cutting length of the thread at the end of a, when it's not doing a trim. It's standard tail's fine, but you can adjust that to a long or standard. Uh, it auto bases, so you can actually load a design, tell it to auto base around that design if you're attaching a towel to some stabilizer or you just wanted a bit more stability in your fabric. The basting stitch is set to five millimeters around the perimeter of the design. It also has a high acceleration. This is one of the key features. So it gets to speed a lot quicker than previous models. So uh, you're up to, in some cases, up to a thousand stitches per minute within seven seconds, which is pretty quick. And um, I like to leave that on high, I like to go pretty quick. Whoops, I clicked the wrong button there. Go through to page three. Um, you can set your colors. I'm going to do this a little later, but one of the greatest things about a multi-needle machine is it's smart. So if you have a design that's going to sew, you know, um, well, in this case, six colors, it will automatically select the needle that it needs. But if you were repeating any of those colors in the design, it will then go back and re and correctly choose the correct needle for you on the repeat color. So that's pretty cool. And um, we can also anchor in colors and that's not, we don't need to get into that right now. Um, eco mode, all uh, the display brightness, all sorts of standard things you'd expect. The screen saver, I don't need that to, to come on every minute. I might change that back to five minutes. And let's go to page five. Um, embroidery crosshair, this has an embroidery crosshair. I'm gonna show you that on the, um, on the fabric in a few moments, so uh, don't need to get into that right now. Light brightness, that's the LED lights. You can adjust that and then volumes, etc. You can be in millimeters or inches. If you're old school and you like to work in inches, then change your setting there. And if you need a different language, you can change the language. Page six, you can actually link this uh, via PE Design software, if you've got multiple of these machines and you're running a business, you can actually link them directly to your computer, either by Wi-Fi or by a LAN cable. Um, 
and or a USB cable. So I don't need to do that right now. I can override all the automation on it. If I want to manually set colors, I can turn on manual color and I can also turn off my thread sensors because yes, it does detect thread um, breaks, etc. And it will detect when it runs out of bobbin thread as well, which is kind of cool. Let's go to page seven. This is, tells you how many stitches you've done. So this is great for our service techs. Trip count, total count. Um, this machine's brand new, obviously, and uh, I've done one design on it. There's 13,352 stitches in the trip count, and uh, that's not even registered as an hour stitching yet, of course. But when this comes in for service, we reset that so we know exactly what, um, how many stitches and uh, has been ha has been done since its last service and how many hours of stitching. And you can also, this is a new feature on this machine. So if you're running this as a business, you can actually set a, um, a, an administrative lock on the machine so no one else can access it unless, you, unless they have the actual password to log in. That's quite good in a business sense to, uh, if, you've got, if you're protecting any you know, intellectual property or you don't want people using it who uh, shouldn't be using it. So that's cool. Uh, and you can also optimize the screens. So you can actually bypass certain screens on this machine. Again, very useful in a business sense where um, just efficiencies are everything. So you don't need to go through all the, the setup screens on the machine. Again, we don't need to worry about that just now. And we're back to the wireless um, setup, which we start, showed you from the start. And this just tells me it's the latest version, version 1.03. Now, here's another feature with Wi-Fi. You can download updates directly to the machine. So you don't need to go back to your computer, download an update, put it on a USB stick, plug it in and, um, and update the machine. It will all be done uh, wirelessly for you. And this machine is up to date. So let's click OK. Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, placement of a design and that forever and a day has been a massive issue for most people and particularly when you can't hoop square or the, the fabric you're working on is just difficult. Um, often you'll know exactly where you want a design place but getting that perfect hoop, um, square hooping is difficult. So what I've got on my fabric here is I'm going to look at this little cross hair we've got at the back here. Hopefully that's showing up. And um, what I can do is we're going to choose a design first and I'm going to place it exactly on the right angle. So I'm going to go into my design menu here and I think we'll go into this one here and I'm going to use that little tiny B that we've got. So he's only a quick stitch out, quite a small design, 50 millimeters by 30 millimeters. We'll hit set to that. Now, easy to load designs, obviously, as you can see. I don't need to resize it or do anything with it other than go to the next screen, which is edit end. But we have this lovely new crosshair feature here. And you can see now that there's a red LED crosshair showing on the fabric. And that's being that's giving me the exact um, needle drop point, if you like, for where my needle would go down through the needle hole right now. And I want to stitch it on that little sort of marking that I've already got on my fabric back there. So what I can do here is um, let's go and choose the crosshair. And I want to use the center of the design as my reference point. So I'm just going to choose the centered and that shows me the blue dot is now centered in that design. That is my reference point. And let's go next. I also need to know what is my second reference point. In other words, um, what angle do I want this design to actually stitch on? I've already, I already know this, the, the position one is the center of the design. And I'm going to use this top arrow here because I, I know where the, the, the vertical angle of that design is going to be. And it'll, it'll, it'll make sense when I, when I get closer to the, um, the mark that I have there. So let's hit next. Now all I need to do is position my crosshair. That, in other words, take that crosshair and position it right in the center of my marking on the fabric. I'm going to use the, I've got three speeds to move things here. I'm going to go to my fastest speed and I'm going to move that across. Now we'll just get that pretty close and then we'll come down a bit there. And then I'm going to move to a slower speed just here. That'll allow me to be more accurate. Now I have perfectly centered my cross, my LED cross in the center of that marking I have on the fabric. Now, if you have a close look at the marking on the fabric, this is typically how we've marked um, uh, placement um, markings on fabric for a long, long time. We usually have a perfect cross and we usually use a little arrow to indicate the orientation of the design. So I want my B to stitch kind of wings across there and kind of flying in that vertical position. So now that I've positioned my center marking, all I need to do is go next and I'm going to now move my cross to be on that 
line just there. And I'm going to use the little sort of angle indicator there as my reference point. So if I come across to there and then just move this across, you can see it's really easy and very visual. You can see it. There it is right there. Now if I hit set, have a look at where my B is positioned right there. And all I've got to do is now go to embroidery and this is great. So it's now telling me I'm using deep gold thread. And honestly, guys, this is one of the most amazing things on the Brother Multi Needle Machines is the, the way to play with colors. This is only a single color design. And it doesn't know that I haven't put gold thread. In fact, I haven't put gold thread up there. I'm actually going to use this yellow thread. But the machine is saying, put your deep gold thread on spool number one and it will automatically select spool number one. So that's what I would typically do. I'd change this uh, pinky purple thread here to a gold thread. I don't need to do that, however. I'm going to override the system and I'm just going to simply tell it to, by clicking on this button here, use needle two, because that is on needle number two and that's the thread I want to use. So I've overridden the system and it now says use, it's using needle two. I could have, if I wanted to, simply told the machine that, um, let's just reset that. I could have told it that needle, that gold thread is on needle two. So I could have gone into this, what I like to call the swapsy button and said, let's swap that for needle two. So now I'm swapping those two threads. And now, the, now it knows that that yellowy gold color is on needle two. Click OK and it automatically selects needle two. So there's multiple ways to control what needles are assigned to what colors. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail soon. But I just want to stitch this design out right now. So now that that's done, my bobbin's threaded, my needle is threaded, and all I've got to do is hit the lock button. This light goes green, hit that, and off it goes. And we are now stitching. So let's watch what happens now. It's going to stitch through the design. Okay, so there it is. That has stitched out absolutely perfectly positioned based on the inputs I used for the LED crosshair. So it doesn't really get any easier than that. And if you've ever struggled with design placement, man, uh, you're going to love this feature. I think it, it's very accurate and it is super easy to use. Now, let's have a look at another typical example where it would be really, really useful is I've got this kind of drawing here of a simulated pocket. So imagine you're putting a little name across the top of a pocket or a straight edge, or you might be putting a, a, a something that's quite square across the back of a jacket, across the top of a yoke seam or something like that. And you need to get it square because let's face it, if you're a millimeter out when you've got two sort of um, very uh, straight references, it will look so wrong and you'll most likely unpick it and do it again. So what we might do this time is actually type in some text. Now I'm going to um, just go back to my home screen and we're going to bring in a font, loads of fonts built into this machine, 50 fonts in total. So you've got loads of options there and uh, you just scroll down to choose the one you want. And in this case, I'm just going to take a standard font and we're going to type in the word brother. So we'll uh, just choose that there. I'm going to leave it in uppercase, but I'm going to go to a medium size and we'll just keep typing. But you can do uppercase, lowercase, whatever you want. And you can even edit the fonts and you can change the characters. You can have different um, different uh, style fonts within the same word. So you can cut fonts apart. You can do multicolored fonts. You can arc the fonts on angle on, on arcs. You can uh, angle it. It, it, it. The list goes on. It really does. Um, so anyway, we've got that. Now I'm just going to click set to that and I'm going to size that down a wee bit. I don't want it at 96 millimeters. I'm going to make it a wee bit smaller down to around 70 or 60 there, that'll be 65 millimeters. Now, when you re alter the size on those fonts, it will recalculate the stitches for you. So you don't need to worry about it being too dense or not dense enough. It will, it will adjust that for you. If I go okay that to that now. Now, remember I was using, um, the previous design I did used, thought it was using old gold thread. So if I go ahead and change the color of this to old gold, and I've just got to find it, I think that might be it, no. It's one of these threads, I think. 
deep gold, that was it. So I've now changed using the standard color palette to be the same thread color that we used on the previous design. And here's the magic of the machine, so or, or the color selections. So if I click OK to that now, and then go to Edit End, again, I've got my little crosshair um, icon here, so I'm gonna click on that. And here, this is a little bit different to what I did with the B, because I am going to use the bottom of the word brother as my reference point. So the center, the bottom center of the word. Currently, the selected area is the center. I want to use the bottom center. There it is right there. So that little blue dot has moved down to the bottom. And I want that to sit directly on the center point of that sort of pocket line that I've got. We click Next. And I know that my reference point for setting the right angle is going to be either this, either direction. I can go out to here, I could go to there, but I'm just gonna choose, currently it's using the right hand option. That's fine, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I click on that. I now need to move the crosshair to the center point that we've already determined is the center of the pocket. And we just need to get that as accurate as we can. I'm gonna do it right on top of the line so you can just see how accurate this is. But you might wanna lift it, you know, a few millimeters off the line if you're actually doing this on a pocket. You wouldn't want it sitting right on the pocket. And we now click next, and I'm just going to use the very point of the pocket right there as my side reference point. And I'm only using that because it just shows up more accuracy, I think. So we're right on the line there. That will do me. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. We go set and I'm ready to sew. So if I now go to embroidery and we can see that the word brother has been moved and it's now on an angle over here. Go to embroidery and look like magic, it's automatically selected needle two because I told it in the previous design that deep gold was in fact, I'm using yellow, but was in fact on needle two. And it will remember that until you change it or you load a design that actually will require it to be changed. So um, if you do a lot of repeat designs, and again, great for business owners because it will automatically select the needles for you. It's a real time saver. So at that point, let's quickly stitch this out and we'll see how accurate it is. Again, all I need to do is hit the lock button and start and let it do its thing. So there we are, that's finished. And the word brother is written perfectly above that line that I have right there. And it was as easy as one, two, three, just using that, uh, the um, LED crosshair feature on this machine. And you, you can use that with designs that are built in. You can use it with designs that you've uh, downloaded yourself, you've sent by Wi-Fi, wherever the design has come from, you can use the crosshair feature. If you were laying out a massive big quilt block, for instance, and you had loads of designs and you've already marked out your block and you've got design stitching here, there and everywhere, as long as you've got the, the, the marker on there and all you really need is two points, a center point and the, um, the angle that you want it to stitch on. So you don't even have to use a whole heap of, of uh, lines that sometimes don't necessarily come out of the fabric that easily when you're using vanishing and fade away pens. So you can minimize that, get perfect accuracy, and um, it also means that you, you can then use the smallest hoop you can. And remember guys, that's an important thing. So if you're laying out a big sort of um, block of designs and you've got multiple designs, the general rule is always use the smallest hoop you can. So if design placement gets a lot easier and you're laying out a whole heap of small designs, use a 100 by 100 hoop or a 130 by 180 instead of a big hoop. You'll get a better result because you've got less pull and push issues, which, um, yeah, we're all after better results, right? So that is a great feature and that is standard on the machine and um, I think you'll love it. So what's next? Okay, so we had a look at the um, using the, the LED crosshair and obviously there's a raft of op opportunities with that, but there's so much more in this machine and, the, and bear in mind, this is a machine that I've just received myself, so I'm still playing with it a bit. Um, I wanna go through uh, some of the other lovely um, design options that are built in. And one of them in particular is these beautiful range of monograms and you can create some stunning results. In fact, I'll show you one. I played around with this yesterday and uh, created that. I'm, I Hopefully that's in camera in shot. So you'll notice it's got some stippling around here. Now this is only a small sample that I did and I'm going to actually replicate this for you in a moment and show you how easy it was. But we took one of the built-in 
uh, monograms, we sized it right down. So we actually took a monogram, sized it right down as small as we could make it, added some text, um, my granddaughter's name, Peyton, and then we automatically stippled around it. Yes, this machine has automatic stippling and automatic echo quilting. Um, surprise, surprise, fantastic feature and really, really simple to use. So let's recreate this design and then we'll show you how that stitches out and then we'll, um, we're going to cover on a couple of um, important features on the machine by, by creating this design. So I'm, I'm sure you're going to love it. Right. How did we do it? So we went into, I'll just go back and start fresh. We went into the beautiful monogrammings menu and have a look at what you've got available. These are huge monograms and scalable. I took this particular one here and then I scroll down to find the letter P. Whoops, I'm just going to go back to the medium size here. So scroll down once. There's the letter P. That currently is 152 millimeters high. That's, that's quite big. I don't want it that big. I want it down to around about 85 millimeters. And once we hit set, I can now go into my size option. Now, on this machine, you've got the ability to select this little button here, which means when we resize a design, whether it's a built-in design or a design you've got from another source, you can resize it with full stitch recalculation. I'll show you what I mean. If I resize that down by simply hold it right now without selecting that, it will go to about 10% and won't let me go any further because that's it wouldn't work properly. Um, I'm going to now choose the stitch recalculation button. It will now revert back to the original design size. And now I can resize that down to pretty much as far as I want. In fact, that's as far as it can go. It stopped me at 84 mil. So it's actually, or 91 mil, it's actually brought it down by something like, oh gosh, um, almost half the size and and it has recalculated the stitch data so there's far less stitches in this than there was at the normal size and that's important so you can resize designs right on the machine without having to go to software so let's click ok so there's my uh, my basic letter p now i have a twin grandchildren the other one's name is parker so i'm going to add some text to put his name in there so we just click add i'm going to go into the basic fonts now uh, the font I used for Peyton was a little bit neat and, and cool. I'm going to use a different font for Parker. He's a he's a little a little bit different to her. So um, we can just scroll down and choose whatever it is we want. Let's go with this one here. It's a bit more like his style, I think. And I'm going to make that a medium or even a small size. So we'll just type in Parker, and we can resize the text after we've got it sorted. K E R and now I'm going to go set and I want that to be in the center. Now, one thing I really like is being able to view my design as a three dimensional image. So if I click on the little, whoops, not that one, that's not what I wanted. Go back up here, that's what I want. I want to see it within the hoop size. Now I'm going to be using a five by seven or the 130 by 180 hoop. And I get to see it in reference to the hoop size. I like that because I've got a really good feel for the size of it now. And if I want to have a closer look at that in three dimension, I can see a really, really high res view. I can also, and this is a great feature, I can simulate the design stitch out on screen. So if I want to see how it stitches, it'll show me exactly how it stitches. That's going really quick. Let's go back to a slower speed. And let's go back to the start. Now, sometimes this is useful. If you've got a design that you have no idea where it's come from, you're not sure how well it's going to stitch, watching a stitch simulation will actually give you an idea of how good a quality the design is. And that's, um, that's a great feature. So we can close that now. I don't need that. Um, and we do not need that. We'll go back to our 100 degrees, 100% uh, view. Now, I want to... I want to add some, in fact, I'm going to change the colors first, because if you notice on, on the machine, I've actually changed my thread colors. So I've put some orange thread on, a limey green, and I've put a metallic rusty sort of red color on there, um, because we thought we'd give you a shot. At, I'll show you how it handles metallics. It's really good. That's the soft light metallic. So I want to go in and change the colors. So right now I'm going to go into my color option here. And before I do change the colors, another great feature on this machine is color shuffling. If I click that button, I, I'm horrible with colors. Sometimes I need some guidance. Let's just say I'm not sure what colors I want to use and I've got Parker sitting next to me and I say to him, Parker, what colors do you want to do? And he says, I don't know, Grandad, what do you want to do? And I could click on Vivid here and, whoops, we'll just select the whole 
the whole design first. Actually, I'll do that when I when I finish putting the rest of these stitches in. So, um, but right now I'm going to change the 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 name Parker to a an amber red color, which is um, oh, close to the the color that I want to do the the metallic thread in. So we're going to use that color, and let's go up and have a look at the other colors here. And I know for the letter P, he's a red guy. He loves red, so we're going to put red there, and then. For that bit of Carmen, I'm going to use orange, I think, which would be nice. And then the green is going to be that limey green, so we'll change that to oh, the lime green. There we go. And then the silver color, I don't want it silver. I want it to be the same color as the amber red. So that's going to be the same color as his name. So that's okay. So I've changed my colors. We'll come back to the color shuffling in a moment. But now I want to add my stippling. And this is a feature that comes uh, off the My Design Center features, which is on the, the, the big 10 needle machine. But the stippling is so easy on this machine. All I've got to do is hit the stipple button and tell it what hoop I want to use. In this case, it's going to be, I'm going to use the, in fact, I'm going to use one of the new magnetic hoops, which have just been released as well. So we're going to choose the 180 by 130. Now you'll notice that it's stippling where the word Parker would have to be, and that's because I haven't grouped it. So I'm just going to cancel that, and I'm going to select this little button here and select all my designs. So I've now grouped them all together. Click OK, and now I can go in and stipple. Choose, I'm choosing my F frames, and the reason I'm going to my F frames is because these new amazing magnetic frames, as you can see here, they actually are, they use an F driver, which is comes with the frame. So that's the F frame. We're going to put that on in a minute. And uh, again, that's the benefit on a brother machine. If you're using a genuine brother hoop, it will auto automatically recognize everything for you. So I've got the F frame. I've got the 180 by 130 selected. I can now change the um, the distance from of the stippling around the design. And I'm going to take that up to about one and a half millimeters, just to give me a bit of space there around the design. And I'm going to change my stipple spacing down to four. That's what I did on the other one. So I'm going to make it the same. You can go right down to a really fine stipple spacing, but four is going to give me a great result. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So we click OK. And now all I need to do is I'm going to go and change my color of my stippling to be white. So right now it's this last color, which is the blue that I've just added, and I want it to be white. And at this point, I can click OK, and I think if I can get back into now, I've got everything grouped there. We'll come back to color shuffling a little bit later because it's a really cool feature. And right now, I am ready to stitch. So if I go to Edit End, all I've got to do, and I don't need to move anything here, all I've got to do is change over. Now, so to change over from a different arm, it's very, very simple. So I've currently got the A arm on the machine for the normal standard hoops. There are two screws. I'm not sure if camera guy is going to get these, but we undo that screw. And also there's another screw on the inside of the arm, just on the left hand side. You do not need to remove the big screw on the end. That stays put. But we take this one off and we remove the arm completely. Just gently take that away. We'll pop that down there for a minute. So now I take my F driver. Now there are pins here. It only goes on one way. You really can't do it wrong. So all we do is just pop that into position, find the associated location pin, which it has now found, and that it can't be put on the wrong way. It is almost impossible to do. So we'll just get around there, do that screw up. Now one feature that's been added to the PR series recently, and I love it, and, and when you're using these bigger magnetic frames or any of the bigger frames, I think it's worthwhile having, it's an optional cylinder or tubular extension table. And what it does is it allows you to, I'll just put this into place, it slides on just here like that, and it is an extendable table that will allow you to put bigger, heavier items on here without sort of dragging uh, the, the, the fabric down on the free arm of the machine. So I like to use that when I'm using this particular function. So all we have to do is slide this hoop on and I'll show, I'll show you, um, we, actually we're going to have other videos on these hoops showing you how, to, how easy they are to hoop up. But this is a magnetic hoop. It's a brand new type of product from Brother. It's a genuine Brother product and we just slide that into the back 
and then just mount that into position so that's all mounted. The design is perfectly centered so we're going to quickly stitch this out and um, wait till you see the result. We'll fast forward of course and then we'll have a look at that color shuffling feature that I just mentioned. So now to get to sewing mode all we do is go embroidery. It may have, it may need some color changes. Remember I changed the threads up here but the, I haven't told the machine that I've done that yet. And so if you look at what's showing on, um, on screen here, we've got um, the first color is amber red and it thinks amber red is on needle one but in actual fact it's on needle six. And again, this is a feature that is great and it's so easy to use. Um, it thinks that green is on needle two but it's not, it's on green on needle five. So all I need to do is go into what I like to call the swapsy button. It probably has a more technical term than that but it's two spools of thread that have arrows pointing to each other. I happen to know that amber red is on needle six so I just go one, six, swap. I know that green is on needle five, so two, five, swap. White is on needle three, orange is on needle two, so two and, five, two and four, swap. And so now all the colors are set in the right location. And now the machine will automatically go through and select the right needle for you, the right color for you. You don't have to think about it. And we're good to go. So let's watch this stitch out and we'll be back in a moment. So there we go, all finished stitching. Uh, just a quick sh um, example of how the auto stippling can look. I'll take this hoop out of the machine. There's a couple of little brackets or little uh, springs you push and that slides out nice and easily. So have a look at that, what a great result. So auto stippling is something that if you're a home user and you're crafty or a quilter, fantastic feature. You can use it on any of the, um, the brother hoops and uh, it's, it's, a great, it's a great feature. Maybe not something you'd use in a commercial sense if you're a commercial user, but hey, you never know. So that's using the optional magnetic frame, one of the new ones. So um, there's videos about these guys on our website as well. So do check them out. We'll pop that over here. I don't need that just now. So um, as I mentioned we also use this tubular table. I love this product but you can also use the big wide um, flat table that is available as an option as well. Some of you may already have that on a machine you might have. So what I'm going to do now is convert back to the standard A-frame. So I'm just going to grab our A-frame which I put down here and again it's really simple and I think this is one of the things I want to get across in this video is it's not a complex machine. It really isn't. You just got to follow what it tells you to do. And then for changing this back, we just undo the two screws. That little F clamp, F driver will come off. And, um, and putting the A driver back on is really, really simple. Now, the reason, um, the reason that the Brother machine does everything so well is because it recognizes its own hoops, as I said. And there's a little sensor that will do that for you. And again, these, um, these driver arms only go on one way. You can't put them on incorrectly. So I keep stressing that. So we just tighten that screw up and pop this one back down there. There we go, that's all set. All right, let's go back into the screen right now. So we'll get out of that. Now I did mention before, I'm gonna show you the color shuffling two feature, which is a, um, uh, an incredibly useful feature. So I'm going to uh, delete that design. Get, well, I'm just going to go back to home. Now, of course, if I wanted to reuse that design again, I could have saved that into the memory of the machine or back to a USB stick or even back directly to my computer if I wanted to. 
but I'm going to pick a design that might lend itself towards color shuffling. So let's, uh, that butterfly is kind of cool. It's got three colors actually. Let's find something that's got a few more colors. And we might use, let's go out of that menu and maybe go into this top menu. And now that butterfly has got loads more colors. I like that. It's got seven colors. So let's have a look at that set. And if we go into our color bar there, and I might grab my stylus again, wherever I put that, there it is. I'm always bad for putting that down somewhere I shouldn't. Now again, let's have a closer look at this butterfly and zoom into it. So that's what we've got. And if you don't really know what colors you want to use and you just want some ideas, color shuffling will do that for you. So close that down, go to color shuffling. And I just want to see that in a range of vivid colors. Click the vivid button and there you go. It just keeps, if you keep refreshing that, it will actually give you loads of suggestions. You might like that one right there, for instance, have a look at it and think, eh, maybe, maybe not. If I hit set, it will go straight to embroidery. But if I cancel that and cancel out again, I could go to soft colors. So it'll give you all pastels and um, it's, it's just giving you ideas. You can also do a gradient shade. Now I like this feature because sometimes you just want to stick with a particular color scheme. So hit the gradient button and, and I've got the yellow button selected there. Uh, let's click OK. And look, it's going to give me a whole range of variations using similarly toned colors. And if you see the one you like, just click that button, go set. And there it is. Now, I'm going to leave that in on screen there. Click OK, because when I clicked on auto stippling, what I didn't show you was it will also allow you to echo quilt. So if we go to this button right here, you'll see echo quilting comes on and you can actually space the actual outlines there. So a lot more. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer there. Let's have a closer look at that. And that's what it's going to give you. And whatever hoop you select, it will actually adjust it to that hoop. So if I close that down and say, well, let's go back to, maybe I want to do a little um, 200 by 200. Let's go there, say 130 by 180. And that's exactly what's going to stitch out. So really simple function and uh, quite incredible to be on, on the machine these days. So love that. You also, uh, let's go back, we'll delete the stippling or the echo quilting, delete the whole design. If I choose another design, let's just take this heart for instance. Let's say I want that to be um, an applique. I could hit the applique button and set and it will now create a beautifully sculpted applique stitch around that design. That's been on our Brother Machines for a long time, but nice feature to have nonetheless. Uh, looking back through here, let's go back into um, back into the home screen. You've also got a range of buttonholes. Now, you can create buttonholes in an, on an embroidery machine very easily, and you can create them pretty much any length you want. So if you're doing something quite different in respect to buttonholes, try using a buttonhole on an embroidery machine. It's pretty darn simple, and you can get perfect placement of the buttonhole. So you've got buttonholes built in. We'll get back out of there. Um, a whole range of, of standard monograms. Don't need to dig into that too much, but they are there as well. And of course, a raft of borders and shapes. So if you wanted a lovely little heart stitch with a special border on it, you've got all these options here and there's, there's loads of them. Again, I, I could stand here for the, the next uh, few hours and continue to show you all of the features that are built into the machine. Um, the best thing is to watch all the videos that are available and of course download that uh, lovely brochure that uh, does dig into it and explain it quite quite clearly. Uh, let's We're back in our home screen, so let's see what else there is to have a look at. We've covered lots. Finally, I just wanted to reiterate the benefits of the tubular hooping, of the tubular uh, hooping style of, of this machine. So to do that, I'm going to show you a very practical example. First of all, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take this uh, tubular support table off. That just slides off. Now again, that is an optional attachment and it works on all the different PR models. Very good for big hoops and the heavy hoops that, that, uh, that can be the case of magnetic hoops. So we've exposed the tubular arm there again. Now, I have got a sports towel here that I've hooped up. Now this sports towel has got a zippered pocket in it. Now hopefully camera guy can get that. Is that uh, in, in shot? So you can see there's a zippered pocket there and there's a, a tube underneath the pocket. So in order for me to embroider this, well, I couldn't do it on a standard home style machine. I would have to remove the pocket. Now, the, the trouble with that is the pocket's really part of the construction of this, this item. 
But what I've done here is I've hooped up a 100 by 100 hoop and it's quite a thick towel and if I wanted to put a little monogram on that towel uh, or a name or something, super easy. So now that that's hooped, the tube is there, I can just, I'm just going to adjust my hoop into the suit the 100 by 100 hoop. So we just slide that in to the appropriate position which will be right there. And I could feel that because there's a little notch that, that comes into play. And all I've got to do is take that tube Slip it over the free arm, slide that into place, make sure that my tube is over the free arm, and right now I'm able to hoop that, I'm able to stitch on that towel. So let's load something and we'll put a name on it. So I'm going to commandeer this towel and put my name on it, and a uh, great easy thing to do, just go to whatever font it is you want. I might choose, uh, let me see, we'll go with um, that one right there. So Gary, G-A-R-Y. Now again, I can size this design. So once I hit set, um, I've got loads of options. We click on the size button. I can go to a medium size and I'm going to take it up a little bit. I didn't want it quite as big as the full size was. That's going to do me nicely. I'm going to go OK. Um, I know my towel is in uh, the correct way and that orientation is fine. But if you hoop something kind of, you know, the wrong, wrong way around or you, you need to alter or rotate your design, it's a very simple process. Just click on the rotate buttons until you get it where you want it to be. Obviously, I don't need to rotate it. Click OK. Uh, if I wanted to do something a little bit different, I could array that. I could actually stair step that up and um, we could... Um, just something a little bit different rather than just the straight name there. In fact, I like that. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to click OK. Now, I would recommend stitching on a towel. Definitely use a bit of um, topping. So I've cut a little bit of uh, Super Solve topping here. And we're going to pop that into place. But if I go Set and Edit End, I will have an option to put a basting stitch down. And that's now going to baste this into place for me so I don't have to hold it. I am not going to do it in black. I'm going to use orange because I like orange. And um, all I've got to do now is go to embroidery. I don't need to move everything. It's perfectly centered. And uh, I've got two colors here. The first color is going to be my basting stitch that I applied, then the, um, the stitching. But you know what? Um, because I'm, I'm going to use orange for both and I'm going to pull that basting stitch out, I'm just going to go in here to my um, manual setting and just say use needle two for both because orange is on needle two. So that's been easily set. And now the machine's going to override everything. All I've got to do now is pop my little bit of topping in there. Just make sure it's kind of centered. And I'm going to slow this down a bit because I don't want the basting stitch to run away from me. And you can slow right down to um, uh, 400 stitches per minute, right up to 1,000 stitches per minute. So at that point, I'm good to go. All I've got to do is hit the lock button and start, and just make sure this is held into place. Don't get your fingers caught. I'm going to use my little stylus here, just to make sure. Now, a basting stitch is a long stitch that will come out very easily, but all it's doing is holding my topping in place. And now it will stitch my name and we'll be back in a moment. So there we go, finished. And this is a typical job that a commercial embroiderer would do all the time is just simply putting simple names and monograms on pieces of apparel. Once we take that out, all we do is trim away the um, basting stitch. That will come away nice and easily. Take away the, uh, the uh, so Super Solve there and we're done and dusted. And you can see there's your stitching through the back there. Um, we take that hoop out. Let's push that out of position. Take the back out and we have very, very simply embroidered that, uh, that pocket with a name and um, again, a very standard commercial application. Of course, one of the other really popular commercial applications is caps and hats and uh, this machine does not come standard with cap frames, but there are two different types available and the reason for that is typically in the uh, 
uh, the headwear or, or cap industry, if you like. There's your standard baseball style cap, which is this particular cap here. A bit of a round beak there and uh, very, very standard, uh, available everywhere and very easy to embroider. Another and fast gaining uh, popularity type of cap is the flat brim cap. And you can see the difference there. And these are a much more difficult cap to do. So Brother have just released a cap frame set that actually will allow you to successfully embroider these very easily. And that same cap frame set will also embroider the standard baseball caps. And look to, we've got other videos showing you how to do this. So I'm not gonna do that uh, on this particular video, but this is what's called the, the, the cap frame driver. The actual framing mechanism itself is, I'll just grab it, comes off there is this guy here and that sits on the driver and that goes on the machine. The cap kind of rotates in a, in a, in a circular motion. So again, please uh, check out the videos on our website showing you how caps are actually embroidered because they're quite in depth and, um, and you know, there's, as again, there's no, there's no point repeating that here now. Needless to say, it's just another uh, incredible accessory that's available for this machine. Um, as I mentioned right at the start of this video, there is the accessory guide, which I strongly recommend having a look at. It is on our website and it gives you the full list of everything that is available for this machine. Um, and, the, and the brochure, of course, will tell you everything that we've just gone through. So look, that, that's kind of it. Um, I, I probably missed some things. I don't know. There's so many features on this machine. If you have any questions about it, please, by all means, send them to us, either on the YouTube channel or on our uh, Facebook Messenger. Call us, email us, whatever you need to do, and we will get some answers for you. But um, terrific piece of technology. Brother are renowned for the, being the leader in this segment, and um, you will not be disappointed with a Brother PR series machine. So if we hit that home button, we're back to our standard screen. There you go. That's the Brother PR680W. Hope you've enjoyed it. And in the meantime, uh, happy embroidering. Cheers. Cheers.